Heather is the manipulative mean chick from Total Drama whose goal is to skyrocket the show's ratings in return for the producer's unyielding protection of her during challenges and eliminations until the very last second. Wonderful symbiotic trade with a hint of a Scheherazade gambit on Heather's part, but certainly an interesting dynamic when you delve like I just did right there. But today, we are not looking at Heather's interrelations with the producers of Total Drama. Today, we're looking at her cruelty and cutthroat methods. Is she really evil? Is she just scared and horrified? What's wrong with her? Abuse? Insanity? Well, it becomes more and more apparent when you delve into one topic I've discussed before. That she, like all Total Drama characters, are nothing more than archetypes of real people whose personalities are stereotypes of the worst impulses those individuals carry. Hello, I'm the Theorizer, and have you ever heard of personality theories? Things like Socionics, or the Big Five, or even the Myers-Briggs? Studying these very systemic constructs is a very enjoyable hobby of mine, as it is to many people. The tests are highly controversial, but the observational patterns of the classifications are pretty clear. I've utilized this semi-stable psychology in previous videos before, but when it comes to Heather, I may or may not have discovered a little polarizing twitch in her stereotype a little thing that these kinds of people she's based on may indeed suffer with on a daily basis. But first, let's take a look at what's wrong with her nurture as opposed to her inherent nature, because her parents aren't the kind of people who'd raise a necessarily loving daughter. The self-proclaimed couple, known as Moomsy and Poopsie, are seen partying and moving Heather's furniture from the house while she's at Camp Wawanaqua during Season 1. It is being implied that they're so sick of her and these rich buffoons have been in the process of shadow evicting her while she's gone. Not only that, but there's something else lurking in this suspicious bonus clip from Total Drama Island. This recording, like the many others seen as bonus clips, were systematically shot. Like, what I mean is, there wasn't just a camera there spying on them partying and they realized it and stopped. That's not what happened. They even kept in the part where they were partying instead of cutting it. This is not accidental, it's intentional by the people sending this clip to Heather. They want Heather to know she's being evicted, both the producers and her parents. They're not only extremely happy to kick her out, but they are lying about then mocking her as well. This is all intentional and these parents are sick. They reveal a few things about their shallow relationship with Heather, such as the rich activities rich people rich with, etc. But if this has been Heather's life, it's no wonder she's had to cope with people defensively. Heather's life is one big messed up mess. She was obviously spoilt as a child, and this built her into a sad and manipulative teenager whose life is based solely around popularity and money. The reason I bring this up is because before I delve even deeper into Heather's reasoning, we do have to touch upon that whole personality thing. I'll be quick, this is interesting. The most famous system of personality typing is probably the Myers-Briggs, or if you want to get really crazy, astrology. But MBTI, as it's called, pegs people as things like ENTP, ESFJ, ISTP, on and on. You've probably taken the test at one point or another. I explain it more in my theory video on theory channels, which I'll link right above now quite a good video. But basically, while the tests are prone to human error and self-bias, the system itself states that there are four letters, each meaning something. You can be introverted or extroverted, abstract or more concrete, have rational or more emotional decisions, or be more focused on organized judgments as opposed to wacky perceptions. Four letters. These four letters very closely correspond as well to the scientifically valid system known as the Big Five, which is what most statistical psychologists use as it measures these four large traits in relation to someone's nurture, and adds on an additional fifth dimension. But these four letters, they came from somewhere. They come, in fact, from a series of eight different brain functions, and I like to think of it in a really interesting way like this. Everyone's like a filter, taking in information and making decisions with that information. And however you do that dictates a good chunk of your inherent nature in life. You'll come across differently, act differently, and the reason this is so important for Heather is because she shows brilliant signs of a very specific stereotypical pattern. As I said, people take in 
information and make decisions with it. There are a couple different ways to take in information. Either you can take in stuff that's immediately in front of you, or take in stuff that's more abstractly conceptual, like ideas and stuff. When it comes to making decisions, you can either make them based on facts and what is rational, or you can decide things based on the emotional well-being of others and yourself. So this leaves four sort of functions, and finally, each of those can either be directed inward at yourself or outward at others in the world. And whichever way these eight cognitive functions are layered by which you prefer to use, that dictates the four broad letters. Nobody is boxed into a single type, people just use these many brain functions differently and develop as they age. Applying things like socionics and this intriguing system to fictional characters is heavily controversial, but Heather is someone who's basically an archetype of a very specific pattern. She constantly utilizes the same axis of traits, the inner emotions and outer logic. She makes her rational decisions based on her environment and on things like the logic of others or methods of command or status and cutthroat analysis, and she makes her emotional decisions, which are much less apparent, based on her own inner feelings and morals very tiny. You see, many people on the internet believe Heather is what's known as an ENTJ archetype. She's basically all of the negative stereotypes of this kind of person crammed into an aggressive teenage girl. ENTJs are known to have a functional pattern that dominates their mind with the rationale and organization of their environment, but with this, suffers the opposite end of the spectrum, and the internal feelings get suppressed and feared for a good chunk of their lives. TE dominance, they're called, and they often feel deep inside and fear intensely that they might be a bad person, evil or bad. Courtney also has this issue, but in a different sector, since she's very much more likely an ESTJ archetype. So the answer to this massive but brief pseudoscientific analysis is, Heather, deep down, wants to be a good person. It's so often surpassed by other things like commanding goals and the latest trend, but all she wants is love and self-happiness. She wants to be good, but she loses her way constantly in the show. Her parents have built an unhealthy child whose life has become a selfish climb to the top of something that does not exist, and her insatiable desire to be good is trumped by her defense mechanisms. Damn, Heather! Intrigue! Overload! But the question you're all asking is, can I diagnose her with something like I have all the other Total Drama characters? So now comes the time to look at some of her actions and see what else goes on in that hardcore strategist's mind. So firstly, again, she's created a mutually beneficial relationship with the producers by entertaining them for so long that the challenges become staged around her. She's obviously playing a much bigger game, and it's interesting to witness. The challenges aren't just randomly choosing her to win immunity each time. I discussed this in my third and final Chris diagnosis theory. They're staging the challenges to keep her on. And the reason she threatens to sue them in the end? She has, for once in her life, not gotten what she's wanted, and she's lost, failed. The producers gave up on her because if she made it to the season one finale, the viewers would never let the producers hear the end of it, and the real life viewers of Total Drama would never let the writers of Fresh TV hear the end of it either, as Total Drama always stages it so that in the finale, both characters have their own ending where they win. They had to boot Heather off, but Heather in show was not expecting this and should have turned her little entertainment gambit into a sob story or something that would result in her heroism. The only reason Heather succeeded in season three was because Alejandro was in introduced a much more manipulative villain, allowing Heather to finally take on the role of anti-hero. Literally everything Heather does is designed to further herself, but in the end, she's not a sociopath like Chris or a falsely insane psychopath like Izzy. Heather's just a cutthroat manipulator who's out to feed her underdeveloped base needs of status and materialism without realizing that in the end, all she ever truly wanted was love. And there you go, the scientific explanation for love is the answer. So I did promise to make a Scarlet Theory in the future, I'm still working on that. Definitely subscribe now to stay tuned for that soon. I'm making lots of theories in the future. Right now I have three constant theory series on my channel. One for Once Upon a Time, one for Spongebob, and one for Total Drama. I'll probably post one of each every three months or so. Maybe even two if I can move quickly. Which I can. Who knows, now that I've better explained the method Total Drama has intentionally or unintentionally used to create its characters, perhaps we can apply more of this to characters in the future. I know the online community of people who study these kinds of topics desire more and more YouTubers to delve into the technical aspects of it, so I guess I can. It's been one of my most major interests of science for a few years now. This channel is like the most ideal thing to manage for someone like me, who utilizes external abstract perceptions and internal logical judgments so constantly. So until next time, I'm the theorizer. I'll find the patterns, dissect the patterns, and prepare you for the depth that madness can go. Mm -hmm.